Hey, what's up guys? Here we are for our part two of our Synthize walkthrough. And basically what we have here is everything tracked from Synthize and our spheres in the scene um, catching our shadows. So uh, basically all I'm going to do in this tutorial is I'm just going to take this, make it a little more pretty, and bring it into After Effects, put this pylon or whatever this is in front of our sphere, and um, then we should be done after that. So let's get started. Uh, first thing I'm going to do just to make this a little little sexier is I'm going to make a new material for our spheres. And let's just go ahead and uh, drag this onto our back sphere first. Alright. Um, and all I'm going to do is make these spheres reflective-y. If that's, if that's a word. Reflective-y. Reflective-y? Reflective. Maybe if I say it differently it'll make it a word. Anyways. So all I'm going to do is Go into our specular here, turn that off, turn on reflection, and we're gonna make this a Fresnel. Let's see, let's, uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, I'm gonna double click this to bring it out. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, turn the mix strength a little bit so that gets more reflective-y. If you, I think if you know what I'm saying, it counts as a word. I'm just throwing it out there. All right, so what we got now, let's see, I'm going to turn this off. That I, I added that while I was, before I was recording, but let's, do, let's look at this again. So we're, we're reflecting the ground, which is fine. We could technically take care of that if we wanted to, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, again, just doing this to show how it's done. We're not making an accurate representation of the, uh, of the area around us. So all I'm going to do to make the top half reflective is I'm going to add a new sky, add a compositing tag to it so the camera does not see it, uncheck scene by camera, and then make a new material, drag it on to the sky, and I actually am going to use a, a sky HDR image. So let's go to our color channel, into our textures, in the same folder here, and I'm going to take this sky image, open it up, and let's just render that out see what it looks like. So now what we have in here is a sky and scenery that doesn't remotely match the houses, but it's reflect, oh excuse me, it's reflective -y, and uh, that's basically the point of what we're trying to do here. And if we want we could make this uh, blurry and everything, but you know, let's just, uh, let's just keep going here. So I'm going to take that that sphere and we still need to add it to our other sphere so I'm just gonna select a material hold control drag it down now both spheres are reflective-y and again the shadows don't remotely match what we're trying to do here which is for what we're doing it's perfectly fine I, and uh, we could make this match more if we really wanted to but so basically what we're what we're doing here is is we're done. Um, there's nothing else really for this tutorial I think we're going to work on. So let's get ready to export this to bring everything together in After Effects. So we have our ambient occlusion on. Ail Sing looks great. I'm going to set up our output, all frames, 25 frames per second. And um, let's see here. Here's our tutorial folder. So we going to make a new folder called C4D. We're going to save our quick time in there. Actually, what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to render this without the background. So all we have are our shadow catchers and our spheres. Um, so each plane, I'm, I want an object buffer if I want to color correct these separately for any reason. So I'm going to have an object buffer for um, each of these. Actually, you know, I'll have an object buffer for our planes and one for our spheres. So. Let's make this object buffer one. This will make this the same one. And we'll give a sphere an object buffer of two. And you know, we'll just drag this up and give it the same one. So we have our object set object buffer set up for our plane and our spheres. Let's set up our multi-pass render for everything we'll need to composite this in After Effects. Um, what I'm going to use is an object buffer. 
a, another object buffer, but switch to group ID 2 for our spheres. And I'm also going to add shadows, and I'm going to add ambient occlusion. And I think that is everything I really want for this. So let's make sure, okay, that's going in our folder. That looks great. I want these to have an alpha channel. Um, let's put our multipass images in the same thing. Call this back, backtrack as well. Let's also make this backtrack. And I'm going to save a compositing file, which will be After Effects. I'm just going to check all these so we get a camera inside of After Effects in case we ever want to put a 2D object into our render. Um, and all of this looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Render. I'm going to let this go, and I will get back to you guys when it's over. Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so... Cinema got done with this render, but I definitely noticed one thing that might help us with rotoing out this pillar in the long run is we can use this null object to help with a roto mat. So one of the steps I did not do that we now need for this is I'm just going to select all these trackers, just shift click, right click, I'm going to add a Cinema 4D tag, an external compositing tag, and now we'll have all these as null objects inside of our After Effects project. So without having to re-render, I'm just going back to the multi-pass here and in our save options, I'm just going to save another After Effects project file, find the exact same folder that everything was sent to, select it, push save, and now overwrite that. So now we'll get our camera with our nulls and everything and that might help us with rotoing this pillar out. So we'll see how that looks. So let's go into After Effects and let me cancel this here in After Effects, double click, grab our export folder, our After Effects project file that Cinema created. And also don't forget to install the Exchange plugins um, that come with Cinema if you haven't done these yet. Otherwise, you won't get to uh, have any of this import. All right, so let's see what we got here. I'm gonna open up our composition and it started with our shadow layer, that's fine. Inside our special passes, we have our uh, all our plates that we need. You know, and let's double click. Let's bring in our original footage that we used right here. And I'm just going to drop that into this composition. And remember, it's scaled because we fixed the scaling before we exported. So, um, so that's actually correct, looking good. And now we have all these null objects inside of After Effects that we can use to use our roto mat. So I'm just grabbing all these trackers right now and putting them on top of our footage. So there you go. All right, so it's really small, so I'm having a hard time selecting it. So I'm just going to right click select tracker and now we know that track is set on to the pylons or whatever that whatever that divider is so let's just make this let's see let's just make this whole comp 23 seconds push n to trim it and I'm going to trim the whole comp to the work area and what I'm going to do is this is our backtrack comp. I'm just going to duplicate it. I'm going to call this one comp trackers. And so now we have a duplicate of our trackers from everything from cinema and we have our new one that we can let's just call this our render comp. All right. So I'm going to double click this and let's uh let's manage all these trackers that we have in our layer panel here. Um so I know I want to keep this one. So let's go ahead and find it. What I'm going to do is select that one. I'm going to hold command and select these two. And I'm going to select the camera. I'm going to right click, invert selection, and then delete it. So now I have that null object that I want to use uh, eventually to roto this out. And you know, let's make the scale. A little bit bigger. 
All right, so let's start making this prettier. Uh, what I'm going to do is take that uh, to take our, a, our original plate, put it on the bottom. And I'm going to take all of our layers and start bringing everything down. So let's put this to normal. All right, so this is our shadow pass. We'll deal with that later. Here is our back track. So this is our spheres. All right, so now if we zoom in here, so what you see here is we have our square from where our shadow catcher is. But that's why we brought everything in separately because we're going to remove everything and bring it back in the way we want it. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, so this is our plane object buffer. So this would make our, oh, here we go, sphere, object buffer for our two spheres. I'm trying really hard not to make a ball joke right now because we have two balls in the scene. I'm just trying hard not to, not to make a reference or a joke about that. Anyways, so we have our sphere object buffer in here. Going to take our footage, set it to luma mat, and now we got rid of our square. So let's bring back in our shadows. And here is our shadow pass. Put that on top of everything. Set the mode to multiply. And then there we go, our shadow's back without that square. And if we want, we can take this, we can turn the opacity down a little bit. Maybe, you know, add a little bit of a fast blur to it. You know, not a, not a lot, just enough. Because if you take it too far, you'll start to see the, the problems we run into. But blur it just a little bit. Maybe I'll turn the opacity down just a little bit more as well. All right, let's come back in here. Let's go to our next pass that we have, which is our ambient occlusion. And this isn't very prominent in here, but we can uh, over, oops, excuse me, we can multiply this as well to get a little bit of that ambient occlusion in there. And again, there's more things you guys can do if you want playing with this to make it sexier, prettier. But uh, the next thing we need to do to kind of sell this is have a mat in front of our object here. And instead of taking our original footage and masking this out, I'm going to take a solid and use a roto mat layer to help kind of take away a lot of the tracking that we have to do since this is already tracked into the shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new solid. I'm going to call this our ro Toto, our Roto Mat. What I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to make it, make it big. I'm going to switch over, make it a 3D layer. Take the position of our null object copy it, go to our roto mat, and I'm going to paste it there. So now we know that since this object's in 3D space with our camera and from our motion tracking data, that that solid object, wherever it is, is a pretty big scene It might not show up, but we know, we know that our solid is going to stay with, with our tracking point. onto that pillar there. So from here we can use this to take some of our footage and we'll scale this up a little bit. And let's just scale up a little bit more. I'm going to turn the opacity down. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to draw a mask on that roto layer. And the bottom doesn't matter as much. What we care about is the top. And then from here, turn the opacity back up, is we can make real fine adjustments to our mat, even though the majority of it's already tracked in there. It's going to take a lot of the rotoscoping away from us, which is just awesome. So I'm going to set a mask path anyways. hit U to see the keyframes, and I might turn the opacity all the way down again, unhide our layers, and let's see how well it stays on. I mean, look how many frames we're cutting out 
of our rotoscoping. Let's put this for now underneath our sphere layer. Let's just see, I mean, I mean, I'm just watching the lines here and the majority of it is all staying on. All right, so you know what? I'm just gonna start the object buffer right now, or I'm sorry, I'm, I'm gonna start the track mat right now, just so we can kind of see how this is doing. I'm gonna turn the opacity back up, set it to alpha mat, and there is our pillar. All right, let's just kind of zoom out here and let's see if we need to make any adjustments or if the track is going to stay steady, which it should because we had a pretty solid track. So there we go. It might be feathered a little bit too much. Let's say one. And let's just kind of walk out this shot and see if we see... And it's staying on there really well, you know, because we, we had a really solid track. There might be a little bit of a, a little bit of slipping right here. That's no problem. We have a we have a keyframe set on the mask path, so I'm just bringing this down. All right, so there we go. And you guys can you know take times with your take more time with your shots and make them look great. Maybe we'll just add a quick quick curves oh yeah oh yeah get it sexy that no okay here we go bit of that maybe you know take a little bit of the uh, you know a little bit of saturation out of it make it a little more I don't know 300 disc I don't know um so yeah basically that's the end of part two uh, got everything looking good in After Effects and uh, hope this helped out again if you guys have any more questions uh, get a hold of me on Facebook or send an email or get a hold of me on YouTube hope you guys liked it if you guys have any uh, suggestions or stuff we can do for next time love to hear it otherwise I'll see you guys next time take it easy